Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey. I'm joined with Kate today over here at the EFL gym, location number two in Pudong. We've got two of them in case you didn't know. One on the east side, one on the west side of the river here in Shanghai, China. Come check us out. Today, we're going to talk about bobbing and weaving and some common misconceptions about that. First of all, one of the big misconceptions about bobbing and weaving is that it's, it's ducking or squatting. Imagine Kate's throwing a big hook at me and I do successfully duck under it. Okay, what next? I come back up and she's gonna hit me again because I'm in the same exact spot. It's not what bobbing and weaving is. You might notice we have this string tied across the boxing ring today because we're gonna do the rope drill. What is the rope drill? Well, it's this. It's moving off the line across here. Here, Kate, go ahead and give that a try. So notice Kate is bobbing and weaving. She's changing her level, but also using her feet, moving left and right under the center line every time. That's very important specifically because if we're squared up here and I throw a hook at her, look, she's not there. She's off the center line. And it's going to take me a whole beat of time to square up. How long does it take a, to throw a punch? That same beat of time. So imagine she wants to counter attack. I throw this, boom, she hits, and now she's in a position to throw her, boom, another punch right there, right? So if I throw my right, she's gonna move off the line, and in the time it takes me to square up, yeah, she can counter. But if on the other hand, she just ducked and squatted and stayed in the same place, as soon as she comes up, she's eating that next punch, right? So again, this rope drill, hey, let's do this a couple more times, can teach us some very valuable lessons about moving off the center line. So this next movement, they used to call it the Dempsey roll. All it is is throwing a hook, a body hook, as we bob under, and then throwing another hook up high. So low, high, low, high. Jack Dempsey did this to Jess Willard back in 1919 in the World Boxing Heavyweight Championships. I mean, there was a huge size difference. Willard was a giant guy and it's basically the same height and size difference as myself and Kate right here, right? So here's, here's a little breakdown of what happened. Willard came in high, Dempsey weaved under, hit the body, and then he came to the head, boom. Willard came over again, boom, body, head. But it's the same simple principle. So Kate, go ahead and give this a try. So we're going to go under the rope as we throw that shovel hook and then come up high to the head. Here, let's see that. Yes. Am I right? So it should be this way and that way. Yeah, so we're, we're punching in the same direction that we're oh, stepping. Okay. Yeah, it's almost like moving like a, like a speed skater. We're pushing off one leg. Okay. Yeah, I know the Winter Olympics are going on right now, so a lot of people are watching speed skating. But it's pushing off from one leg to the other to generate this, this type of power. And as we move to one side, we can generate an enormous amount of power in the body going under here, going under there for that body hook. All right. So let's try that out with each other here. So I'm throwing this, boom, she strikes the body and then comes up high to the head and boom, body shot, head shot. All right, one more time, body and head, very nice. Now, the body mechanics here are very important. As I always say, it's not a squat, it's a bow. Exactly the way Jack Dempsey taught in his book. I've received a ton of questions from people saying, well, doesn't it unbalance you if you bow? Well, if you do it like this, yeah, it, it would, right? We will keep the knees a little bit bent, weight forward on the balls of the feet, hinge at the hip, stick the butt out ever so slightly, hinge at the hip. Now, I don't need to go any lower than Kate's shoulders here, and she doesn't need to go any lower than my shoulders here. Why? Because that's, that's the line of attack right here for my punches. If I'm aiming at her head, yeah, she's gonna bow under the shoulder and she's gonna clear that, right? If she's aiming at my head, I'm gonna bow under her shoulder and I'm gonna clear that. It's not a huge movement, even though there's a pretty big height difference. It's that, right? It's not a, it's not this. If I'm squatting, this is gonna be a lot slower than it needs to be. And not to mention, it's gonna lock me in place, right? So it's a little bit of a bow, hinge at the hip right here. My head does come forward. And this is where another big concern comes. People will say, well, can't people just grab your head and pull it down? 
And the answer is, if you've got broken posture, they can do whatever you want. And again, when I say posture, everybody postures up like a soldier. But that, that's not exactly what I'm talking about. All that means is that your head, your neck, your spine, and your tailbone are in a straight line. So this is unbroken posture. This is also unbroken posture. But here, my posture just broke. My posture just broke because I put my head down, right? We can also break the posture by torsion, twisting side to side, right? But as long as the head, the neck, and the spine, and the tailbone are in a straight line, this is okay. Now, if Kate grabs my head and pulls really hard and I look at the floor, boom, she's gonna bounce my head off the floor, okay? But if I keep my, my posture unbroken and she grabs my head, go ahead and pulls, right? Now I'm in a strong position. Now I can still move athletically and fight back and you know, do what I need to do to stay in the fight. Same thing right here. Kate, get really strong posture. Okay. Keep the eyes focused upwards. So if I'm pulling here, even though she's hinged at the hip, she has a level change, this is a different thing than broken posture. If you watch wrestling, for example, collegiate wrestling, freestyle wrestling, amateur wrestling, they're almost always in this posture like this, okay? And you might think, oh, that's terrible posture. It's not because their heads, their necks, their spines, and their tailbones are straight. Now, as soon as I look down, if I break my posture a little and she pulls, she's gonna snap me down, boom, right? And do what she wants. Now, the second thing about this argument about snapping somebody down if they're bobbing and weaving, is kind of silly because it's a reaction to a punch. And look, she just moved off the line. How am I gonna grab her if she's not in front of me anymore? So again, I hook, she moves. Look, there's nowhere, nobody to grab. So I can't stress this enough. When we're bobbing and weaving, we are changing position. We are moving off the line. It's not just fancy head movement for the case of head movement, right? I know some fighters like to show off, like, you know, if she throws punches at my head, I'm like, oh, look at my head movement. It's so awesome, ooh, 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 ooh. right? But, if I'm just standing there with my feet locked in place, that does me no good. Maybe it scores me some style points, but why are we in a fight? Because we want to win, right? So if she's throwing punches at me, I need to change my angle so that I can get a nice counterattack. Same thing right here. If I throw a punch at her, she wants to change her angle. Why? So she can get a nice counter right there on the chin. Boom. One of the worst places to fight is straight in front of the other guy. This is a fair fight, kinda. Well, I've got a reach advantage and a size advantage, so it's not a fair fight. Kate doesn't want a fair fight, do you? No, you want an advantage, right? How do you get an advantage? You make an angle, right? Yes. Get to the peripherals, so she wants to sneak behind me. Go ahead, sneak behind me. Right? She wants to be here. Now she's got all kinds of advantages, right? She can attack from behind, she could attack with a choke, she could you know, get all kinds of takedowns, whatever the sport is. And bobbing and weaving is a very simple way to give yourself that advantage by gaining the angle, okay? So, remember, angles are important, friends. Practice, when you bob and weave, unlock your feet from the floor, hinge at the hip rather than squatting or ducking, right, and change your angle. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train. Brought to you by xmarshall.com. Use my code RAMSEY10 for 10% off everything. That's xmarshall.com. High quality training gear and fight apparel. And since everybody always asks, if you have questions that you want answers to, just leave them in the comments below. I read your comments, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy this groovy music. Now get out there and train.